This is video 37 in the lectures on the design of reinforced beams. This lecture deals with the overall design of a reinforced concrete beam from dimensions, needed reinforcements, stirrups, stress control, sag and crack width. The overall design of a beam um, handles 10 topics or 10 elements, the 11th is the summary, ranging from strength and durability up to a check in the uh, SLS uh, situation. We first start with uh, the durability. <clears throat> the problem or, or the, the example that we are going to work out is a, a simple example of a beam on the uh, on a level on, on a certain level of a house a house situated not in a coastal area we take a beam of for instance the living room and it's a one-way slab uh, so it means that this uh, almost square 6.8 by 7.6 you cannot make it in one way uh, slab, so we have to divide it in two by a beam. And the beam makes it that we can make this floor with one way slabs as what is the, the as, as is requested. The fourth floor finish is two and a half kilonewton per square meter, and the thickness of the bearing capacity is 200 millimeters. Now, we want to make an overall design of this bearing beam of this floor. We start with durability. For the environmental class, we know that we are inside a house and in a non-coastal area, so it's AEY. From the uh, environmental class, we can see that the minimum concrete type is T.065 and the minimum concrete class is C1620. From the environmental class, we will now calculate the needed concrete cover, which is the maximum of those two terms. The beam is uh, casted against fixed formwork, so the uh, element delta C surface is zero. Then we concentrate on C min B. We don't know what the maximum grain size is. If we don't know, we take the maximum, so we take Vs plus 5. So C min B is Vs plus 5. C min dur, the required minimum uh, concrete cover. We know that for a house, the structure class is S4. We are in environment class EY. So the minimum is 15 millimeters. So that's 15 millimeters. So we got now that the concrete cover C min is the maximum of the three. So the maximum of 10 millimeters, 15 millimeters, millimeters from C min dur, and C min B is Vs plus 5. So we end up with Vs plus 5, on the condition, of course, that your diameter is at least 10 millimeters, which will be the case. So C nominal is now we add up delta C def, which is 10. So we have now in total, the cover is the diameter of the longitudinal reinforcement plus 15 millimeter. In the condition that Vs is at least 10, it is uh, yeah, at least 10 millimeters. Then we go over to step two, the loads. The, this is the beam, the system length of the beam is 7.6 plus 0.2 divided by 2 plus 0.2 divided by 2. So it's 7.8 meters is the system line uh, of the beam. In the other direction, we have the slab, one way slab in this direction and in this direction. The netto is 6.8, we divide by 2. And then we have this red one, but we add 0.1 for this support to it. So it's three and a half meters. Okay. In fact, 
the point one that we have added is not there in the reality what loads are concerned in the system line that 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 is that is absolutely needed it's a question of, of, of uh, bending moments and a question of shear force but here when we are uh, looking for the load on the beam you could argue that the point one is not needed because in the point one that's the masonry standing there so it's only from there until the mid of the beam uh, the mid section of the beam but uh, we'll, we'll take the system line the same way we've, we've done it here the difference is very very small so the total mobile load, uh, we know it's a living. So from the code, the, the mobile load of living is two kilonewton per square meter. So we have uh, three and a half meters divided by two. So half is going to, to there, but on the other side also the, the same is coming. So it's times two and times two kilonewton per square meter gives you seven kilonewton per meter. So the mobile load is seven kilonewton per meter on the beam. Permanent loads is a proper weight and the floor finishing. The proper weight is a problem. We don't know uh, the uh, section of the cross section of the beam. So we call it B times H. So it's 25 B times H. And the uh, proper weight of the floor we know and the floor finish. The floor it's 0 0.2 times 25 and the floor finish is 2.3 per square meter times three and a half divided by two and then on the other side also so it's times two so that's the total permanent load width and depth of the beam are not known yet so we take them in our formulas as b times h now to make any progress we will assume that the width of the beam is half the depth which is an, uh, a recommended value so the width is half of the depth. We know that the depth is given by this formula. D we will calculate for strength. C we have calculated already. This is the stirrup diameter we will calculate later on. And this is the diameter of the tension reinforcement that also we have to calculate. So these are the formulas that we have. Um, we will now, just to make any progress, we will now make an estimate to the depth of the beam. We need that depth of the beam because we need to calculate some loads before we can go any further. So for an estimate, we do the, the next, we take the slenderness and we say that the slenderness is 15. So the depth of the beam is more or less the system length divided by 15 gives you 520 millimeters. That means that the depth, the overall depth of the beam is approximately D divided by 0.9 and we say it's 600 uh, millimeters. So it's just approximately, nothing more, nothing less to have a, an idea. The load is then uh, on the beam with this proper weight, H is then 600 and B is then 300.6.3 we have 51 kilonewton per meter that's an estimate the bending moment maximum bending moment is then 388 kilonewton meter and from the maximum bending moment we will roughly estimate reinforcement so we use 0.9 d as a lever arm remember this is just an estimate and nothing more this is not a calculation it's just an estimate it's 1906 so we know a diameter 25 will be will be fine so now if we've made an estimate of the total depth of the beam and we have made an estimate of the vs the uh, maximum diameter we will use we st still have to make an estimate of the stirrup diameter we know that the spacing of the stirrup must be uh, smaller than 0.75 d d we estimate with 520 so it's 390 so we round it off towards uh, down we round it down to 350 we know this is not an exact figure eh? so uh, don't make it this too too tight so we make it to 350 so we know if the spacing between the stirrups is smaller than 350 it will comply with 0.75d the stirrup reinforcement 
can be estimated by the shear force divided by 0.8 d and the shear force is then 51 which is the load times the span divided by 2 because it's at the support and we, we have 0.48 so hv over s is 0.48 that means that the uh, stirrup diameter for two legs and with a spacing of 350 that's the spacing we have 10 millimeters so now we have estimated the depth of the beam we have calculated in fact the uh, concrete cover and we have uh, calculated the or not calculated estimated the diameter of the tension reinforcement and the diameter of the stirrups so this is still an estimate it's 582 millimeters so this is an estimate okay now we know more or less where what are we doing we take 600 and the first cast of the dimension is then 600 times 300. The proper weight, the, the, the permanent load is then 30 kilonewton per meter. The mobile load, 7 kilonewton per meter. That's the beam, the 30 and the 7 in characteristic value. It means that in uh, ULS, it's the mobile load times 1.5 and the uh, Permanent loss times 1.35 gives me 51.07 kilonewton per meter, and the maximum bending moment is 388 kilonewton meter. The minimum required concrete quality is C1620 because of durability. We are in an environmental class EI, but we will use here the more common concrete uh, C3037. If you use C1620, you can run into troubles with the maximum concrete maximum allowable concrete stress or you can have a problem with the deflection so but that's why we use here the more common concrete c3037 fcd the design value of the concrete uh, strength is then 17 megapascal and we designed the beam with optimal use of materials. It is with the maximum strain of the materials. Then we know that the optimum is 2.31 square root of the bending moment divided by BFCD. We put in some numbers and we have 637 millimeters. So for strength reasons, the effective depth should be 637 millimeters. Using C1620, the effective depth uh, would be 872 millimeters. You see, this is a big difference between the two. We know if we, when we are using the effective depth, the optimum depth, sorry, as effective depth, then we can immediately calculate the reinforcement without using the tables because the zeta is then 0.892. We put in some numbers and we have the needed reinforcement of 1570 square millimeters if you use two diameters it's diameter 31.6 so it means two diameters 32 or three time diameters 25.8 means three time diameters 28 or four diameters 22.3 is four diameters 25 we must make a choice but we know that the crack width is very sensitive to the diameter size so it is important to choose the smallest diameter possible we first will check those number of, 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 of reinforcement is it possible to put it in the width of the section or what width of section because it's not known uh, do we need so let's suppose we have 4 diameters 25 then the width you need is the concrete cover plus the stirrup times two left and right plus three times the distance the clear distance between the bars is three times 40 plus four times the bar size so we need at least 320 millimeters but we started with 300 millimeters so the best thing now to do is that we will choose a width which is bigger so we take 350 millimeters instead of 300 millimeters because now we know we need four diameters 25 and they cannot fit into 
the proposed width. The total depth is now the D optimum plus 15 plus 25, which is the concrete cover, plus 10 plus 25 divided by 2. We have chosen for diameter 25, gives you 699.5, so 700 millimeters. So that's a good thing because now we have a beam dimension of 700 at times 35, 350, sorry. Concrete cover is 40, steel up diameter is 10, but this steel up diameter is still estimated, it must be calculated later on, and tension reinforcement is diameter 25. Now we are going to recalculate the beam with those dimensions, because we have here in the last step, we have made the width 350 instead of 300 and the total depth 700 of six instead of 600. So we have to do an iteration uh, and, 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 and recalculation with those new dimensions. The mobile load was seven. The total permanent load, this was the permanent load of the floor. Now we have a beam 700 times 350. So this is then 31.6 kilonewton per meter. The load in ULS B is then 53.3 kilonewton per meter. The maximum bending moment 405 kilonewton meter. The optimum is then, remember the B is now 350. It's now 603 millimeters, and the total needed depth is now 665 millimeters. And if we check again the reinforcement that goes with this optimum depth, it's 1,731 square millimeters. This means 6 diameters 20 or 4 diameters 25. So we will take 4 diameters 25. But when we do that, when we take the four diameters 25, we see we only need 1,731. Even if we take diameters 20, we have still some reserve in the reinforcement. Because of this reserve, we know that this total depth that we need, maybe we can round it off downwards. We only do that because we know here there is still some reserve on the reinforcement. This difference is large enough to allow us to round it off downwards. So we recalculate it again, 0.35 times 0.66. We calculate the load in ULS, the bending moment, the effective depth. Now we are not going to recalculate again the uh, optimum depth because otherwise you can you can go on forever like this so now we have chosen we have chosen a section of 350 uh, times 660 and we calculate the real effective depth which is there it's 597.5 so and this is different from the optimum depth that goes with the 401 kilonewton meter so it means now we have to calculate the reinforcement with mu d, the reduced bending moment, and with the table, because we know here we are in domain 2, 2a, and with the table we find zeta is 0.891. It's not much difference, but anyway, this is to show you the principle. If the optimum is different from d, then you have to calculate the reinforcement with the tables. It's 17.32 square millimeters. It's four diameters 25, we still have this reserve. And we check the width. The width again, it should be at least 320 and we have 350, so the width is okay. So the summary, the beam dimensions are 660 times 350. The concrete cover is C is C four, the concrete cover C is 40 millimeters. The stirrup diameter is 10 millimeters and the tension reinforcement is 4 diameters 25. The load in ULSP is 401 kilonewton meter. In SLSK, it's 291 kilonewton meter. 
in SLS F is 265 and in SLS Q it's 254 kilonewton meter. Now you can handle the design of a beam from A to Z and in next lecture we will uh, calculate the shear force and the sag of the beam. See you at next lecture.